Hey guys, thank you for joining me once again. My name is Grand Wolf, and we're pick, gonna pick up where we left off. But, uh, the um, goblins just stole all the dwarves. I'm afraid that was the last they ever saw of those excellent opponents, including a jolly, sturdy little white fellow that Elrond had lent to Ga Gandalf. Says his horse was not suitable for the mountain pass. For goblins to eat horses and ponies and donkeys. And other much more dreadful things. They are always hungry. Just now, however, the prisoners were thinking only of themselves. The goblins chained their hands together behind their backs and linked them together in a line and dragged them to the far end of the cavern while with little Bilbo tugging at the end of the row. There in the shadows on a large flat stone sat a tremendous goblin with a huge head and armed goblins were standing around him carrying axes and bent swords that they used. Now goblins are cruel, wicked, and bad-hearted. They make no beautiful things, but they are they make very, make clever ones. They can tunnel on mine, as well as any of the most skilled dwarves, when they take the trouble of the, though they are usually untidy, dirty. Hammers, axes, swords, daggers, pickaxes, and tongs, and all also instruments of torture they make very well or get other people to make their design prisoners and slaves that have to work till they die for want of air and light it is not likely that they invented some of the machines that have been around have been that have since troubled the world especially ingenious devices for killing large numbers of people at once for wheels and engines and explosions always delight them and also not working with their own hands more than they could help. But in those days, those wild parts, they had not advanced, as it's called, so far. They did not hate the wars, especially, no more than they hated everyone else and everything, particularly the orderly and the prosperous. And some wicked dwarves had made alliances with them, but they had a special grudge against Thorns people because of the war which you have heard mentioned but which does not come into this tale and anyway goblins do not care who they catch as long as there is done smart and secret and the prisoners are not able to defend themselves who are these miserable persons said the great goblin dwarves in this said one of the drivers pulling at Bibble's chain so he fell forward onto his knees we found them sheltering on our fort porch what do you mean by it? said the great goblin, turning to Thorin. I'm no good at work. Spying on the private re private businesses of my people, I guess. Please, I shouldn't be surprised to learn murderers and friends of owls not likely. Come, what do you got, got to say? Thorin the dwarf at your service, he replied. It was merely a polite nothing. Of the things which you suspect and imagine, we had no idea, idea at all. We sheltered from a storm of what seemed like a convenient cave and unused. Nothing was further from our thoughts than inconveniencing goblins in any way. That was true enough. Um, said the goblin king. So you say. Might I ask what you were doing up in the mountains at all? And where were you coming from? Where are you going to? In fact, I should like to know all about you. But that would do much good, Thorin shield. I know too much about your folk already. Let's have the truth, or I'll prepare something particularly uncomfortable for you. We were on a journey to visit our relatives, our nephews and cousins and first, second, and third cousins, and other descendants of our grandfathers who live on the east side of these truly hospitable mountains, said Thorin, not quite knowing what to say at all once in a moment, when obviously the exact truth would not do at all. He's a liar. Oh, truly tremendous one, said one of the drivers. Several of our people were struck by lightning in the cave. When we invite these creatures to come below, and they are as dead as stones. Also, he has not explained this! He held out a sword which Thorin had worn, a sword which came from the troll's lair. The great goblin gave a truly awful howl of rage when he looked at it, and all so soldiers gnashed their teeth. Clashing their seals and stamped, they knew the sword at once. It had killed hundreds of goblins in his time. When the fair elves of Gondolin hunted them in the hills or did battle before their walls, they called it Orchrist.
Goblin Cleaver. But the goblins called it simply Biter. They hated it and hated worse anyone that cared. It. Murderers are not friends! The goblin shouted, Slash them! Beat them! Bite them! Gnash them! Take them away into a dark hole full of snakes and never let them see the light again. He was in such a rage that he jumped off his seat and and himself rushed at Thorin with his mouth open. Just at that moment, all the lights in the cave went out, and the great fire went poof into a tower of blue glowing smoke, right up to a roof that scattered piercing white sparks all along the goblins. The yells and yammering, croaking, gibbering, and jabbering, howls, growls, and were beyond description. Several hundred wildcats and wolves, being roasted slowly alive, together would not have compared with it. The sparks were burning holes in the goblins, and the smoke that fell from the roof made the air too thick for even their eyes to see through. Soon they were falling over one another in heaps on the floor, biting, kicking, and fighting as if they had all gone mad. Suddenly a sword flashed in its own light. Bimbo saw it right, it go right through the great goblin as he stood dumbfounded in the middle of his rage. He fell dead, and the goblin soldiers felt fled before the sword shrieking in the darkness. The sword went back in the sheath. Follow me, quick! said a voice, fierce and quiet, and before Bill will understand what had happened, he was trotting along again as fast as he could trot at the end of the line, down more dark passages with the yells of Goblin Hall growing fainter behind him. A pale light was leading them on. Quicker, quicker, said the voice. The torches will soon be relit. Half a minute, said Dory, who was at the bag next to Bilbo, and a decent fellow. He made the hobbit scramble on his shoulders as best he could with his hands tied. And off they went at a run with the clink clank of chains, many a stumble, since they had no hands to stay themselves. Not for a long while did they stop, and by the time they they must have been right down to the very heart of the mountain. Then Gandalf lit up his wand. Of course it was Gandalf. But just then they were too busy to ask how he got them. He took out a sword again, and again it flashed in the dark itself. It burned with rage that made it gleam if goblins were about, and was bright blue as bright as blue flame for delight in the killing of the great lord of the cave. He made no trouble whatsoever of cutting through the goblin chains and setting all the prisoners free as quick as possible. The source name was Glamoring, the foe hammer if you remember. The goblins just called it Beater and they hated it worse than Biter, if possible. Orcris, too, had saved them, for Gandalf had brought it along as well, snatched it from one of the terrified guards. Gandalf thought of most things, and though he could not do everything, he could do a great deal for it, friends in a tight corner. Are we all here? said he, handing a sword back to Thorin, low bow. Let's see, one, there's Thorin, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, where's Vila and Keith? There they are. 12, 13, and there's Mr. Brackens. 14. Well, well, it might be worse. And then again, it might be a good deal better. No ponies and no food and no knowing quite where we are. And hordes of angry gobs and just behind it. On we go. On they went. And Gandalf was right. They began to hear goblin noises and horrible cries from far be behind in the passages they had come through. That sent them on faster and faster. And as poor Bilbo could not possibly go half as fast, for dwarves can roll along at a tremendous pace, I can tell you, when they have to. They took it in to they took it in turn to carry him on their backs. Still goblins go faster than dwarves, and these goblins knew the way better. They had made the pass themselves, and were madly angry. And so do what they could, the dwarves heard the cries and howlings getting closer. Soon they could hear the flap of the goblin feet. Many, many feet, which seemed only to just around the corner. The blink of red torches could be seen behind them in tunnels they were following, and they were getting deadly tired. Why, why did I ever leave my hobbit hole? Poor bag is bumping up and down on Bumper's back. Oh, why, oh, why did I ever br bring a rich little hobbit on a tre treasure hunt? said poor Bumper, who was fat and staggered along with the sweat dripping down his nose and the heat and terror. At this point, Gandalf fell behind. And Thorin with him, they turned a sharp corner. About turn, he shouted. Draw your sword, Thorin. There was nothing else to be done, and the goblins did not like it. 
They came scurrying around the corner in full cry and found Goblin Cleaver and Fall Hammer shining cold and bright in their stomach eyes. The ones in front dropped their torches and gave one yell before they killed. The ones behind yelled still and leapt back, knocking those that were running after him. Bite her and beat her, they shrieked. And soon they were all in confusion. Most of them were hustling back the way they came. It was a long while before any of them dared to turn that corner. By that time, the dwarves had gone on again at a long, long way on the dark tunnels of the goblins' realm. When the goblins discovered that they had put out the torches and they slipped on soft shoes, they chose out their very quickest runners with the sharpest eyes and ears. These ran forward as swift as weasels in the dark and with hardly, hardly any noise than bats. That is why neither Bilbo nor the dwarves nor even Gandalf heard them coming, nor did they see him, but they were seen by goblins that run silently up behind, for Gandalf was letting his wand give out a faint light to help the dwarves as they went along. Quite suddenly, Dory, at the begin at the now at the back again carrying Bilbo, was grabbed from behind the dark. He shouted and fell, and the hobbit rolled off his shoulders into the blackness, bumped his head on a hard rock, and remembered nothing more. And I will stop here.